I want to be able to bring more people to the orchestra. I want to be able to make the orchestra to go to more people. I want it to become more of the center of the community, more of the center of the city, more of a point of focus, a place for people to come, and a place that is provoking and instigating many different points of conversation, a place of gathering. What are your impressions from performing with the MSO in Malmö as a guest conductor? I had wonderful experience conducting them as a guest conductor. I mean, they're wonderful, kind, loving people. They're so positive. They really love to work. I had a great experience with them when I came the first time doing Mahler's Seventh Symphony. Be, my purpose is to always make things better, to do no harm, to try to make things as well as I can in the time I have. I mean, isn't that in a way what it is to be a human being? Try to do the best you can with the time you have. Yeah. Well, I think the musicians in the orchestra have very much the same philosophy. I feel that when I was working with that with them, and I think it's a wonderful thing when you have this both. Of these two different ideas coming together at the same time and uh, it was the impetus for for the invitation and the impetus for me agreeing to be with them and I'm looking forward to what we're going to create together. You have an amazing career and enjoy the privilege to be working with some of the world's most renowned orchestras like the London Symphony Orchestra and Gewandhaus Orchester Leipzig. What have you learned from working with the very best? What the very best orchestras often have that is different than other orchestras, which may be of exactly the same level, but not necessarily the same prestige, is tradition. Years of tradition, sometimes imposed or developed by a conductor, sometimes by the musicians, but for sure, if nothing else, traditions are maintained by the very musicians who are in the orchestra, the people who make up the institution. So in this case, the Malmo Symphony Orchestra has a short history compared to that of the Leipzig Gewandhaus. And so when I come to work with these type of orchestras, like the Leipzig Gewandhaus, the London Symphony, for example, I end up learning about what it is that they do. What is their tradition? What is it that some of their aesthetics? How do they go about doing what they do? And I think one of the things that I'm trying to do as a, as a conductor, and certainly something I would try to do as a music director, is to bring some of those traditions, which, those which I think fit my personality and my aesthetic, and may be useful to the Malmö Symphony Orchestra, and then to help put the roots down, or at least plant the seeds for some traditions that maybe in 40, 70, 100, 200 years, as it were, become the traditions of that orchestra. And that's part of what I'm, I'm hoping to do or start to do in Malmo. What led you to conducting in the first place? My love of music. Uh, when I was eight years old, I um, remember I was with my father and I heard the, the radio was turned on and I heard Mozart's Requiem for the first time. And it was like light went off in my life. I mean, uh, an explosion of enthusiasm that has never stopped. Uh, I, a big bang, you know, it's, everything is still in the aftermath of this moment. And uh, I, I just love music, and I wanted to start being a musician, so I wasn't able to start until I was around 13 years old. And, uh, and then I started, and then about a year later, I, I saw somebody conduct, and I thought, well, that looks really fun, and that looks really great. Picked up a stick, got my first score, and started along my way. And along the way, I, I learned that it's not just a fun thing, but it is a position of immense responsibility. I mean, if you look at the orchestra and you look at the way it's organized, you see 16, 32 violins, you see four oboes, one timpanist, but you see this one person, this one conductor on the podium. And it's a very interesting position because I am the most musical person who makes no music. I don't say I'm the most musical person because I'm on stage with a lot of wonderful artists. But being on stage in this moment of influence, this is something really incredible. And one of the things that has attracted me to being a conductor, it's not necessarily that, I mean, of course I've had to sort of give up a little bit on, on making the sound of myself, which pains me sometimes. It's really, really hurtful not to be able to make sound because I love doing it. But what I get in return is the possibility to be able to take an orchestra like the Malmo Symphony Orchestra or to any orchestra that I get to work with, but in particular as a chief conductor, to take that orchestra and to be able to help it become more viable in the community, to help the orchestra play well, to help the musicians who are in the orchestra to be better together and to be able to really project 
what our art form can do to be an advocate, to be, to use an American expression, to be the greatest cheerleader that has ever existed for not only the orchestra, but also for the art form. And that's something I really value out of conducting and something that is central to why I am a conductor. And I hope that uh, when I come to Malmo, I hope people will see that as a person who is in love and deeply passionate about this orchestra. Under the direction of Marx Stoll, the MSO has been digging deep into the French repertoire. What repertoire would you like to perform with the orchestra when you take over as chief conductor? Uh, I think it's really fantastic that they have had such a, um, a champion of the French repertoire uh, at the head of the orchestra. And of course, I would like to be able to continue that and also to be, continue to work with Maestro and bring him back to the orchestra and, and, and to honor the relationship that they've had. But also what is interesting to me is, is to look at, uh, I mean, to, me personally as a musician, I'm known for doing Mahler and Strauss and Bruckner and, and uh, these type of very heavy German romantic composers. But it's not my only interest. I love the music music of Verez and Messian. I love the music of Berg, Berlioz, the music of Elgar, von Williams, etc. So my, my tastes are very diverse, and I hope to be able to bring that to the orchestra, this diverse flavor of um, music making and different aesthetics. And point in fact, as, as, as uh, what may characterize some parts of my, my tenure, is this deep focus on particular composers at particular moments. So notice I don't say that we're going to focus focus on an aesthetic, but let's say we may have a, 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 a focus on the music of Elgar and then a focus the next few months later on the music of Dutiu. I want to go very deep on every composer that we work on when we're working together, but I want to also go very long in the, in the vision of what we're working on. What steps would you say are most important for a conductor wanting to take an orchestra to the next level? What is the next level is a really ambiguous thing. I mean, that is a point of perspective, really. But I think what a conductor can do and what a conductor should do are, is to, to unify an orchestra, to galvanize an orchestra, to play better with each other. So it's, as you can imagine, in any circumstance where you have a lot of people, you have uh, 120 musicians on stage, you have effectively 120 opinions that's really crazy and yet we're all expected to make one exact moment in a uniform way and a conductor can help with this a conductor of course can stand in the way of this process but in my my hope is that I will be on the the the, the affirmative side to help it come together and to be able to use the orchestra and to be able to use the music that we present to be able to create an environment of inclusivity, an environment of love, an environment of humanity, an environment of optimism, an uh, environment of, of discussion, an environment in which we can come together as people in a society and to be emotional, intellectual, and there in a community fashion centered around this orchestra. And I think a conductor, is, it's part of the job. I think it should be, if nothing else. And, and whether I have the right idea or not, I mean, that's for other people to decide, but that's certainly how I'm trying to approach my, my job. <laughs> 